Hello people and welcome back to this tutorial if you don't want to be a beginner anymore in AutoCAD. This is the part 4. In this video we will learn to use the design center as well as the tool and block palettes. They are located in the view tab. Finally, in the last minutes we will have a look at the external references, a very useful feature in AutoCAD. Now we can start. The Design Center In AutoCAD we can import content from different drawings. Let's go to the View tab and at the Palettes panel we can find this icon, the Design Center. I click on it and on this window we can browse for a specific DWG file. I'm going to choose this one and then you can see that we can have access to blocks, dimension lines, layers, line types and other elements that are located on that file. If I want to insert a specific block from this file, I click here, then select for example table 1, double click on it and this window appears. Now if I click on OK, we insert the block exactly in the way that it was created. But we can use few insertion options. Let's see them. In the middle section we have the scale and is set by default as 1 for each x, y and z axis. If I click on specify on screen, you will see what happens. AutoCAD prompts to specify the x scale factor. I'm going to type 2 and then it asks to enter a y scale factor. And have in mind if it's a different value than x, that would deform the table. So, as I don't want it to happen, I have to use the same x scale factor, 2. I press enter to place the block and as you can notice all the dimensions are now double size. Back on the insert window, I can click on uniform scale to insert just a scale factor for all the axes. So you have a step less. Another insertion option is rotation. Put a tick on there, click on OK, then this time I put for the scale 0 0.5 and then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees on this direction. So it's simple as you see. Finally, there is also another and important information here. The block unit, which for this one is set as millimeters and I cannot change it, as you can see. Actually, the unit is defined when we create the block, here on the bottom left corner. I think a lot of people don't notice that, even usually it's not a problem. But what's important to know is the unit that appears here by default is what is set on the unit properties. For the insertion content. You might remember this when I explained in the tutorial for beginners when we insert content from a different file and that's exactly what we are doing here. Let's now have a look on the next example. I'm going to change to this file where I have several door blocks. I'm going to choose door 1 and this time you can see that the block unit is set to inches. As in my current file the unit is millimeters, the block has to be converted from inches to millimeters and the conversion factor is automatically calculated here. It says it's 25, but is it correct? Do you remember if you look at the tables? 1 inch is 25.4 millimeters. But it shows only 25. Why? Because on the unit properties I have this option set to not show decimals. If I change it to 2 decimals or 1 decimal, now you can see 25.4. It could be 25.40 but it doesn't show the zeros at the right of the comma because it's no need. 
Since Autocad 2020, there is a new palette to insert a block from other drawings. It can be quite useful. I click on it. Then I need to click on this ellipsis to find a different file. And here you have the blocks within that file. This is a nice feature. It's faster to search for blocks and also you have in this panel tabs that group the blocks from other drawings, recent blocks that you used and the blocks from the current drawing. It also indicates which blocks are dynamic. Now to insert a block it's easy. Double click in the one that I want, go to the drawing and it just asks to specify the insertion point. You can see here that is the only option ticked. The disadvantage regarding the design center is that I cannot see the unit that the block was created. Anyway, I don't think that's a big issue, as I can always check it out on its properties and if you notice that it's not in the right size when you insert a block, you can simply apply a scale to it. So among the elements on the design center, we can also add layers from other drawings. It's very simple. If I want a layer from this file, Centro de Exposiciones, I just need to double click on the one that I want and it's automatically added. You can see the new layer Arcos Pista. To import more than one layer, I select them and this time I do not double click it doesn't work this way. Instead, I click with the right button and choose Add Layers. Here you have them. And remember that in the layer properties, the layers are displayed in alphabetical order. For dimension styles, it works the same way. Simple. So you can play around this with the other elements and you will notice that they work all similar. Tool Palettes It's this icon here. This is another way to insert content from different drawings. I think this is something really useful in AutoCAD. Basically, it's a kind of library that organizes items into these different tabs, which are called palettes. All these items here come by default in AutoCAD and they are located in sample files. If you are curious, those sample files can be found on the AutoCAD folder. Go to Samples and all the default DWG files are there. There are dynamic blocks, normal blocks, hatches or other kind of objects. Let's open one of these files, for example, Home Space Planner and you can see that there are just blocks here. And actually, we can get advantage of these files because we can use those blocks in our projects without the need to search for blocks on the internet. These are also more sample files. Now let's go back. On each palette here you can find specific elements. Blocks for architectural, annotation, mechanical, electrical, civil, and so on. To insert an element or object, just click on it and click again in the drawing. It's very simple. The only thing is that you don't have insertion options here. It uses the ones by default. You can also insert a hatch. For example, I click in this dark red and place it there like this. But be aware, this doesn't create any layer. If you look at the Hatch tab on the ribbon, it just uses this specific color for this object. And it went to the layer walls, as it's the current layer. Ok, now I'm going to show you how to organize these palettes. If you click here with the right button, you can use the palette group that you desire. For example, there are the parametrics here. If I click in Civil, it shows this one and so on. 
Look that there are also tables or even visual styles. Then these palettes can be customized. If you click with the right button and then go to Customize Palettes. On the left side you can see all the palettes and on the right the palette groups. Each group contains how many palettes as we want. Some just have one palette and others like the annotation design have several palettes. As you guess all these can be customized. Just click and hold in one palette for example modeling and drag it to a palette group. I put it on annotation and design and at the top. The order here indicates how the palettes are sorted on the tool palettes main window. Ok, but actually I don't want this palette here. So to remove a palette, click with the right button and click on remove. Now I want to show you how to add new palettes, for example with blocks from other drawings. What we need to do is to use the design center to bring content to the tool palettes. So I have the design center window here and I want to add the blocks from the files that are in this folder. If I click in any file with the right button there is an option here to create a tool palette. Click, then wait a few seconds until the palette is generated and as you see, it goes directly to the top of your current group and also only the blocks were generated. Then I'm going to repeat the process for the other files doors, home assembles, kitchen and windows. All are generated and placed above. Back on Customize Palettes window I'm going to add a new group named My Blocks. And then move the new palettes to this newly created group. When ready, I can also remove these palettes from the group annotation and design as they are not needed anymore. Select the palette and press delete. Finally, switch to my blocks and here you have the palettes with this nice organization. So you can see, at least in my opinion, this is a very practical way to use blocks in your projects and it's also possible to choose a specific block from one of your lost files and put it, and put it directly on the palette. Now I encourage you to create your own palettes and you will see how organized your projects become. External references I open a new file and here I want to attach a reference to a file that it was previously given to me. This one, Project Architecture. Imagine that I am a structural engineer and I want to draw here the structural plan. Or I could be an electrical technician and I want to draw electrical circuits there. So on my new file I go to the insert tab and on the reference panel, this is the panel that controls references, click on this arrow to open the external reference palette. An alternative way is typing the command xref or external reference. At the moment I just have here the current file and you can recognize it by the DWG icon. Then if I switch to Project Architecture, now you can see that the current file changes. It also has an additional element, which is an attached image. The details of each file you can check out on this part below. This is a JPG file. That image is the one that I added to the title block on the layout tabs here. Then if I click on Cut in Black logo with the right button, I can detach the image in a load and you can see it disappearing. But I don't want to do it, so I click again with the right button and click on Reload. 
So, to attach here the file project architecture, I go to this icon, then I click on attach DWG, select the file, in this window I click again on OK or specify the insertion options that I want. At this moment I'm not going to scale the reference, the option specify on screen is not ticked and I specify the insertion point. If you remove the tick on this box, the base point will be on the coordinate specified below and if it's 0, 0, 0, the base point will be on the origin. Click on OK and place now the base point where I want. I'm going to put the coordinates in the origin. So I type 0, press tab, 0 again and press enter. So here you can see the reference to the project architecture and it's easy to recognize because it's darker than usual. At the file references list you can see the new attached file the DWG, the project architecture, and the image that was in that project is also shown here. And it appears with the name of the file first, and then the name of the image, the Calling Black logo. However, sometimes for any reason, some of the files attached might not load, because the program can't find the file. And even if you click on reload, nothing happens. So the solution for this is clicking on change path and search for the file on your computer. How to edit an external reference in a drawing. If I click on the image, you realize that everything is selected. I cannot select a line by line or, or an object by object. Also, on the ribbon, it shows up a new tab called External Reference. Here I can create a clipping boundary on a part of the drawing and other options. Example, let's say in this project I only want to show the floor plan below. I click on Create Clipping Boundary, then I select Rectangular, draw a rectangle around the drawing and the, all the other parts of the file just disappeared. I can also invert the part of the drawing that is showing by clicking on this grip. Now let's use a different clipping boundary. I'm going to click on polygonal and it could be useful if in a different case I would like to select this drawing below or the drawing above and not the one in the middle. So the purpose of using external references is to allow two or more people working in the same project. Now let's suppose I have a specific task in this project. Look to the layer properties. Now they are a bit different as I'm using external references. On the filter section I can choose which type of layers that I want to display. The layers on grey are from the external references. First you can see the file name and then the layer name. For example, at this moment I have all the layers shown on the screen. Now I switch to the all non-xref layers or I can see only the layers from the external reference. So it's not hard to work with external references as you can see. But I recommend you to practice a bit to interiorize all the steps that I have been showing to you. So it was everything for today, thank you very much for watching and see you in the part 5. Till next time.